Hello, Facebook Live. What's happening, everybody? Hello, YouTube. It's Marcus here. And Jamie. And Jamie. Jamie's, got a lot to say today. Jamie's got a lot to say. She's packing groceries back there. Um, a lot of big grocery orders today. Thank you, everybody, very much who's been ordering from us. A lot of big. Salmon's back in stock. Um, our wild salmon's back in stock. Um, we got this new um, oil that I'm going to talk about that is amazing to cook with. I want to share a quick story about how we got free toilet paper, big toilet paper mistake from one of our vendors. Uh, so we got a case of free toilet paper. I want to talk about how that happened. Um, it is Wednesday, so it's buy one, get one pizza tonight. Um, here comes the phones. Uh, we just sent the email out about 30 minutes ago and the phones are ringing nonstop. So um, it's buy one, get one pizza tonight. Uh, five o'clock on, five to eight. You call before. Don't call at 5.30 and say, hey, I want to pick up in a half an hour because we book every half an hour in slots, every 15 minutes in slots because we, we only can do so many pizzas every 15 minutes. If we mac out both ovens, every shelf is on every shelf ovens, we can only make so many or four pizzas on every shelf, however many ever go in there. Uh, we can only make so many pizzas. And so Jamie has everything mapped out strategically. So when you know you, if you want pizza tonight, call early, six four seven three thousand. And early means before we open. We're here answering the phones. Um, all right. That's the one thing that, um, that I never quite understood about, especially delivery drivers, like FedEx drivers. Um, a lot of the FedEx drivers are very, very guilty of this. UPS, not so much. But FedEx drivers are really guilty. They'll, they'll come to the front door like at 1 o'clock and see, oh, they're open at 5. Nobody's there. No, no, in the restaurant industry, somebody's there. There's a chef in the kitchen cooking. There's, there's somebody there that is, that is, that is cleaning, cooking, um, paying bills, writing paychecks, but they're in the back. They're in the service entrance. They're in the office. Um, and that's the one thing that uh, FedEx, uh, especially when the new drivers uh, come on, uh, you can tell when a new FedEx, it's a new FedEx driver because uh, they just slap a sticker on the front door and I'm like, I have the back door wide open. You have to go into a service entrance for restaurants and besides most restaurants take food deliveries and FedEx deliveries through a service entrance. You never see somebody, you know, wheeling in kegs of beer through a restaurant's front door. There's a service entrance. Um, but, um... So we're here all day. Pretty much we're here all day. We answer the phones all day. Um, talked about, uh, let's see, what else can I talk about before I jump into this oil and toilet paper? Uh, Mother's Day, I'll be cooking in the garden. It is um, Mother's Day takeout. I'll be cooking omelets in the garden. You order, come up, I'll, I'll, I'll cook to order for your omelet. We have a few other things. We got all these morel mushrooms just in, wild morel mushrooms. Uh, we sold several orders of morel risotto last night and um, hope to, uh, to have morels left for Sunday because we're gonna still run morel risotto. Our menu's changing. Uh, we are, are, are downsizing our prices drastically on a lot of things. Uh, we are going to go more a la carte. We're gonna do more tapas style. So shareable plates, things like that. Um, the prices are coming way down on certain things and, um, and uh, no more coursing food out. You're just gonna be able to order and share and get food as it's ready coming out of the kitchen, which will speed up service and help us have probably one less person in the kitchen just trying to figure out how we can manage um, less staff. We're probably gonna have less guests in the dining room when they open us back up so uh, for, for dine-in. So, we'll, lot, lot, you know, so we have to think about a lot of, lot of different uh, factors and variables and how we can still be busy, um, offer great value, um, definitely bring the prices down and sort of, sort of um, um, make things work logistically. Free gloves. We have free gloves. We have plenty of gloves in stock. Um, we're still buying gloves. We're still able to buy gloves here and there from certain distributors. Mm -hmm. Um, we still have free gloves, so come in, grab a couple free gloves, no purchase necessary. Ionized water. We have ionized water uh, for free. It's high alkaline, high antioxidant, micro-clustered, electron-rich uh, alkaline water for free. We have a nice machine here. You bring in your jugs, and we will fill them with fresh ionized water. Water is crucial for health. Water is crucial for um, to flush toxins out of your body, to hydrate your system, um, crucial for a lot of different different things. Um, so there's a great book out there, The Many Cures Your Body's Many Cries for Water. It was written, gee, 40 years ago. Maybe it was written in the 70s. Yeah, 40 years ago or so. Um, an Indian doctor wrote, Your Body's Many Cries for Water, and it is um, an amazing book. 
water is is just the water is a universal health health substance, and high quality water is what you need. So um, Ellie's saying the black cod we bought from you was great. I never had black cod. Uh, we like cod, but this is so different. Yeah, so black cod, folks, is not like cod. Black cod from Alaska is also called sable fish. Different than Pacific cod. You have Pacific cod and you have Atlantic cod. And then you have black cod. Black cod's totally, totally different than those other two cods. Pricier, flakier, more delicate. Um, I would eat black cod over the other cods any day. It is... Um, it is such a better quality fish, an Alaskan caught, Alaskan processed. So all of our fish is back in stock. We had a salmon shortage this weekend. We got shorted from salmon from one of our suppliers. Um, salmon came back in yesterday and more salmon's coming in today. We have plenty of black cod. We have plenty of halibut. We have plenty of scallops. We have plenty of shrimp. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, I see Howard, I see Susan. Hi, Susan. Susan just called and placed an order. Uh, Tamara, Ellie, uh, a bunch of people. Judy, hi, Judy. Uh, Greg is on, Aileen is on, Judy's on, Eileen's on. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. I want to talk about the best single oil to cook with. Um, when you cook with oil, folks, every single oil, um, every single oil that you cook with has a has a point where it deteriorates based upon the heat. So it's important that you pick oils that have higher heat resistance. When you smoke oil in the pan, it is a carcinogen. It is rancid. It is no good anymore. You want to get rid of that oil. Never let, never let oil smoke in your pan. That's way too hot. It's not good. So, but certain oils start smoking at, at earlier temperatures, uh, at lower temperatures. So the smoke point of oil is very important. So when you're going to be sauteing and cooking, coconut oil is fantastic. Um, butter is good if you, if you use butter. Uh, coconut oil is like that one, one, um, that one oil that's, that's like universal. That's just, it's, you can get it at a better price. Um, very high heat resistant. But the one problem with coconut oil is it's hard to cook spaghetti and meatballs with coconut oil. You can cook Asian dishes with coconut oil, but certain things are not that great with coconut oil because it imparts that coconut flavor. And there are some deodorized coconut oils, but that's a process, um, where you're obviously stripping something from the coconut oil itself. So, um... One of the single best oils to use is going to be avocado oil. Avocado oil is a superstar when it comes to, to its heat resistance and its quality. Macadamia nut oil is also very, very good. So after lots and lots of, of not lots, but several, several um, uh, requests, we now have avocado oil in. So we have the Primal Kitchen Avocado Oil. It's a 16 ounce, it's $9.99. Um, um, Nicole's saying, tuning in from the beach today, uh, waves at my feet. Thank you for rubbing that into us. It's chilly here in New York today. Um, I think, Nicole, you're in the Tampa area, correct? In Florida. Um, so hi, Candace, hi, Tina, uh, hi, Pamela. So avocado oil is gonna be one of the best oils to cook with. Um, so, great, Ellie, grapeseed oil is good. Grapeseed oil is good. Avocado is better. Okay. Um, the sunflower oil that we use, the unrefined, unfiltered, un that, that really fresh sunflower oil we use here is also very good, but it has a sunflower taste to it. So, you definitely know you're consuming sunflowers. If you were to, let's say you were to take the sunflower oil that we use and fry potatoes in it. Um, we've actually had people, um, we've actually had people say, Oh, you're, you're, something's wrong with your potatoes, like our brunch potatoes on Sunday, because um, every Saturday night, Saturday night is one of the nights that we, we change our oil in our, in our little um, pot that we cook wings in. So in the mornings when we do Sunday brunch, they go into fresh sunflower oil, the potatoes, and the potatoes will absorb the flavor. And we actually had people say, something's wrong with your potatoes. Um, they don't taste good. And when we tell them, well, it's, it's sunflower you taste, they're like, oh, yeah, that is sunflower I taste. But I wasn't expecting sunflower on my potatoes. And that's what happens when you use sunflower oil. It's just like using coconut oil. So, um, but I like, I like the taste of sunflower. I like, I don't eat peanut butter typically. I eat sunflower nut butter or, or sunflower seed butter is what I eat. Um, so I'm used to that flavor. And for me, it's no problem. But if you don't like it, um, 
If you don't like it, like Nicole's saying, it's weird. Uh, sunflower adds a tang to them, so it's weird. Yeah, for some people, it's weird. For me, I've come accustomed to it, so it's just something that doesn't bother me. So you have to kind of um, be careful with sunflower oil and understand that it's not some funky flavor that's on off flavor, it's part of the sunflower. So, but avocado oil, folks, is a really good oil. This is in, it's $9.99. If you went on Vital Cost, um, which is one of those health food um, discount uh, discounters online, this would be $10.99. So we have it for $9.99 cheaper and of course no shipping because you come pick it up. Or if you get on our grocery delivery list and we're delivering to you, to your door, $9.99 plus your other groceries. So again, we're trying to be, we're trying to be very cost conscious throughout this whole thing. Uh, we're trying to of course make money and pay our bills and do things like that. But we're really trying to offer health food better quality food at a better value. So a lot of the way we price things is we'll check the retail prices and we'll, we're gonna, well, then we say, okay, we're not gonna charge what vital cost or what Whole Foods would cost. We're gonna, we're gonna charge a little less. Somebody came, uh, I think I told this story before two weeks ago and they were looking for Frontier chia seeds. Well, they wanted chia seeds and I said, I can get Frontier chia seeds in one pound pouches, they're organic. I quoted them $16. Um, Go to them $16 and online, it's like 22, 21. So I'm really, we're just really trying to be fair. Ellie says, I buy avocado oil from Adams. It costs more. Okay, that's good to know, Ellie. Um, I'm not sure what brand they have. Uh, so, um, and then I wanna talk about really quick how we got free toilet paper. So yesterday, um, during this toilet paper shortage, we got free toilet paper. <laughs> so, um, it's actually the Whole Foods brand. This is pretty funny. This is a pretty funny story. Um, so, our one distributor, United Natural Foods, they are terrible at mispicking items. Mispicking items is means when their warehouse people are, are picking orders for the trucks, they'll have their sheet, they'll have their, their manifest, and it says, okay, we need peanut butter. And uh, Aroma Time Bistro gets two tubs of peanut butter. So either the people who, who accepted the delivery and put it on the shelves might have taken might have taken toilet paper and put it in the peanut butter skew. So of course they don't read; they just grab what's in the skew in the in the shelf there in the peanut butter shelf. And whether it's toilet paper or a box of bleach, they'll sticker it and tag it and then ship it out as peanut butter. So we actually ordered marshmallows yesterday. Uh, the dandies dandies are, are marshmallows that we use. The vegan. Uh, vegan marshmallows. People say, well, gee, Mark, Mark is vegan marshmallows. What do you mean? So marshmallows, folks, have egg whites, and they typically have pork gelatin in them. So they are not even vegetarian in most cases, marshmallows. So read your ingredients very, very, very careful. All right? Um, so I ordered marshmallows. Jamie's like, I need more marshmallows for my Rocky Road fudge. So I went to order marshmallows, and in comes this big box I'm like, those don't look like marshmallows. I didn't catch it right away, so we paid the bill, signed, gave the guy a check, and as we're going through the pallet, because a lot of delivery companies don't like to come in, they don't like to come in the door, so they'll just leave everything outside, which is fine, because then we can spray things. We take our rubbing alcohol, and we go through and we spray everything. So they had everything wrapped up in the pallet, and I was the guy's last delivery yesterday, and he was in a hurry to get back, so I just signed it, signed it and I looked through the invoice later, and lo and behold, there's no marshmallows. So... The sticker that they put on the box is for marshmallows on a toilet paper box. So, and the funny thing is, I couldn't even buy this toilet paper if I wanted to because it's a private label for Whole Foods. It's Whole Foods 365. So I don't even have access to buy this. It's one of the proprietary ingredients that um, Whole Foods, uh, United Natural Food stocks for Whole Foods. So... I called them back today and I said, hey, listen, you guys made a mistake yesterday um, and their policy is right now is that they don't take back returns. They will not bring a box back into their warehouse. You can't even go there to pick things up because of COVID. So that's one of the precautions they're taking. It's like, well, we don't want that box back because we don't know who touched it, basically. We don't know who touched it. We don't want to contaminate anything. We have a very strict process here of, of, of bringing orders in. So guess what, Marcus? Enjoy the case of toilet paper on us for free. We'll give you credit for the marshmallows and keep the toilet paper. And I said, well, that's nice. Thank you very much. So in a time of toilet paper crisis, we got a free case of toilet paper. So I think this toilet paper will end up in our, at our house uh, for personal use. 
Um, uh, somebody asked if it's double ply. I have no idea if it's double ply, Greg. Um, <laughs> let's see. Greg wants to know if it's double ply. Um, Greg, Berger? Greg Berger wants to know if it's Greg double Berger. ply. He's causing problems. 100% um, recycled bath tissue, new and improved, stronger, six rolls, no added fragrance dyes, 100% recycled, 80% post-consumer, whitened without chlorine bleach, ultra strong. Um, two-ply. It is two-ply, Greg. Yes, it is. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so we got double-ply, um, basically organic toilet paper for free from our distributor because it was a mistake. So um, that's it. I'm going to go for my run now. Uh, today's day 500 uh, for me, 500 days in a row. I'm going to go up to the mountain to Sam's Point around around the lake. I'm going to take one of the dogs, one of the border collies with me. So if anybody's out there, say hello to me. I, every time I'm out on the trails running, uh, a lot of people say, hey, a lot of people recognize me before I recognize you. So I apologize. A lot of times I'm in run mode. And I'm running, so I just, I don't, I'm not aware of, I don't recognize everybody who's around me, and a lot of times I will recognize you, uh, but I see it every time, every single time I go out on the trails, I always see somebody that knows me from the restaurant, so um, say hello. Even people have posted pictures of me later, was that you running today through the snow or, or through that? This is, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I am going to talk later about, probably tomorrow maybe, what I'm doing with all of the local crystals that we have. I did a Facebook Live last night talking about how we acquired a bunch of local um, crystals from uh, from uh, the mountain here. I didn't harvest these myself. A friend of ours did, a longtime guest here and friend. Um, he has he has a great collection of, of, all, of local crystals. So um, I don't even know how long ago these were harvested from the mountain, but these are from right here, folks. Blocks from the restaurant. These are these are taken. So uh, we have a specific plan that we're going to do with these. And I also got a couple bigger pieces. So it's, it's, exciting, it's really exciting what we're going to do with them, and I'll, I'll share one maybe in a day or so. But now if you go behind the bar there, see right in the center, right there, that and that. So that, that's, a, um, that's a piece that has a pocket inside, and right there has crystals on the outside of it. I can zoom in on that. There we go. I can zoom in. So there we go. So, and there's our amethyst from Brazil. So now, now we have local. We've always had a couple local smaller crystals like sitting on the barn in my office, but now we actually have like a nice centerpiece of local Ellenville quartz crystals that are on the bar. So that's exciting. Um, all right. Uh, Michael says, I saw you, I, I saw a post that you had black cod. Is that sable? Yes, that is sable. Um, and we have it again. So it's in stock, Michael. It is here in stock, ready to rock and roll. Uh, it's frozen, skin on, six ounce portions, uh, sable fish, black cod, butterfish uh, is a nickname for it. But black cod, sable fish, that is correct. That is the exact fish. That is here. Um, Ellie posted a comment uh, earlier on this feed how it is amazing, how it's great. I love black cod. It is, it is real. In fact, I think I'm going to have black cod maybe later for dinner tonight or tomorrow. I have not even had a piece since we've gotten it in. I love it. This is we got morel mushrooms in. Morel mushroom risotto with some black cod it is probably a, uh, sounds like a great dinner, right, Jamie? That sounds delicious. What wine would you recommend? Uh, black cod, mushroom risotto, morel mushroom risotto. Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, right? Yeah, nice Pinot Noir. Um, nice Riesling. Riesling uh, nice Rose. German Riesling. Rosé. Rosé goes with everything. Rosé is awesome. So something else that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be serving, we're going to be doing frozen cocktails. We're going to be doing a frozen Negroni. And I think the other one we're going to do is probably a frozen. Warm out. No, we're going to do it right away. Okay. <laughs> we need to be warm out. Uh, but this is something you can serve all year. So we're going to get one of those nice machines that freezes drinks. And we're gonna have a Negroni basically always available for you uh, in this machine at a great price that uh, in the summertime, uh, even now, uh, is really great. I know when I go into the city, there's a bar that we go to. And back in February, beginning of March, in the cold, I was drinking frozen Negronis at this one restaurant. 
And the, probably the other drink we're gonna do in there is probably a frozen rosé, I think for the summertime. We can switch it up. But in the summertime, definitely frozen rosé wine called Frosé. And we're buying this, this great mix from Brooklyn, uh, New York here called Kelvin, K-E-L-V-I-N, Kelvin. And it's a certified organic mix. And then we get to add our, um, our, uh, um, our alcohol. So we get to add the alcohol. So we buy the mix and you have to have a certain sugar content, bricks content, right? So it has to, has to be like a really designed something. Specific. So in these machines, like a, like a slushy machine. Um, so we're buying an actually organic mix. So no corn syrup, no funky stuff in it, no colorings, no dyes, nothing like that. So, um, so that's the story with that. Got okay, a couple more questions here. Black cod, thinly sliced on an everything bagel. Yeah, um, black, they have smoked, smoked sable fish, folks. Smoked black cod is amazing. Uh, really an awesome, awesome food. Uh, what, uh, Ellie's saying, what oil do you use for the tuna? So Ellie, we use the sunflower oil for the tuna. Um, you can use the avocado oil for the tuna if you want to sear off the tuna like I do. Absolutely use the avocado. We don't you cook with avocado oil. It's extremely expensive. Um, and the sunflower oil for us for a commercial setting, it's unfiltered, unfined, freshly pressed. Um, it's not bleached, not deodorized. It's totally unrefined. Uh, it is one of the most durable, durable oils for our situation for our circumstances and it's an expensive oil by the way too but um i have never seen avocado oil in bulk i could they probably have it somewhere i could probably look look it up rice oil is good too rice bran oil is very good i hear um a lot of really good health benefits to rice bran oil be careful where the rice bran oil is from a lot of rice patties in Asia are contaminated with arsenic. We use Lundberg Family Farms rice, which is grown in California. Tested for arsenic, tested, uh, very rigorous testing. The problem with rice patties is, if the water is contaminated, the rice gets contam very contaminated because the rice sits in, the rice actually grows in on these patties, in these water patties, right? So the water's contaminated, the rice gets contaminated, they're always touching, they're always in each other, they're always connected to each other. So that's why rice has an arsenic problem coming out of Asia. Uh, the good news is not much, um, not much Chinese rice actually comes into the U.S. Believe it or not, I mean that's one thing that you think that um, that China would provide a lot of us with, and I think only like ten percent, fifteen percent of all the rice in the U.S. I went over these statistics a couple of months ago. I, I think fifteen percent max is like all the Chinese produced rice. We still have a lot of Indian rice that comes in from India, and um, just because it's not China could mean, Indian doesn't mean it could be clean as well. So you have to be very careful uh, when you buy rice, and uh, our, we're just hooked on Lundberg Family Farms, really a great rice, awesome product, great, uh, great company. All right, uh, people have also been asking about salt. Our salt, our Redmond Real Salt from Utah Flats. We have a couple 25 pound bags coming in, hopefully today or tomorrow, because we're almost out and I will be breaking those down into smaller units and I'm selling those. So we can save you a lot of money per pound on those. We'll just repackage them. We have a cryovac machine. We'll relabel them. Uh, tequila tasting tomorrow. Tequila tasting tomorrow is, uh, not, te not tomorrow, it's uh, Saturday. So we're doing this great tequila. It's a virtual hangout. So it's a tequila and rock and roll virtual hangout Saturday night. We have all the tequila here, the Siete Leguas. We package it in small bottles, which I don't have the small bottles handy right now, but I ordered a bunch of stuff from Uline glass bottles. We package them up for you, give you three bottles. You can get food or without food. I made this morning incredible salmon cakes from wild coho salmon, uh, potatoes, no egg. We keep it egg free and we keep it, so we keep it um, egg free and we also keep it gluten free. So the way, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a Facebook Live a video on how to keep crab cakes and fish cakes like that gluten free. We add potatoes. We add riced, milled, mashed potatoes. When you take potatoes um, and mix it with seafood, you can make a nice cake. It's not, it's not something you can hold up and has has has, has structure, but it is um, it is uh, it is. They're nice and soft, and they're really nice. And there's no gluten in them, and we don't add any eggs into them. Um, Allie's on from Italy. Hi, Allie. I just saw your name pop up there. Um, Allie is in. Um, Help me out, Ali. You're in uh, North Northern Italy. Northern Italy. You are um, um, Gavi in Gavi, uh, which is a great white wine region. Um, so that is an amazing. We've actually been to the vineyard there, uh, Magna Padrini. So hi, Ali. Hope everything's okay in Italy. 
and um, that's it, folks. Um, oh, Mother's Day. Mother's Day is the last thing I want to talk about. I think I already did talk about it. In the garden, I'll be cooking omelets and uh, to order. It's takeout. Uh, they'll be on, I'll have music blasting in the parking lot. If you want to sit down on one of the park benches and enjoy your food, you can. It's a municipal parking lot. Uh, the village has no problem with people sitting and doing that. Uh, they said that's totally okay. So um, we'll be doing that. I'll have music. I'll have the tent up. And the fire pit will probably be going just because um, it looks great and it's wonderful. So the fire pit will be going while you're waiting for me to cook your omelet. And our full menu is going to be available as well. Hopefully we'll have some morel mushroom risotto around if the morels are still here. And all right, folks, I got to go run. I got a bunch of stuff to do. It's pizza night. Uh, I got to jump in the kitchen here soon, and we're going to probably make 150 pizzas again tonight. So call your order in early, 647-3000. And wait for Jamie's happy hour at 4-ish today. Yesterday, she did a margarita, of course, for Cinco de Mayo. Um, I don't know what she's doing today. We will uh, have, to, uh, have to wait. All right, everybody, talk to you later.